The Great Southwest, high deserts, cliff dwellings, the scene of countless cowboy movies, as different from the east as the moon. That's where Amtrak's Southwest Chief will take you. That's where it took me and my wife Liz after a 24-hour train ride from Washington, D.C. The Southwest Chief begins its westward journey in the underworld of Union Station in Chicago. Our mid-afternoon departure meant we would encounter many local and regional commuter trains. We're leaving Chicago on the same rails on which we'd arrived a week earlier. Looking back, we got a great view of Sears Tower. This is so Keeping that cityscape in sight was a challenge. Yeah. Alright, I got a good, good snapshot of it. Some of our best views came later, as we played hide-and-seek with Chicago's impressive skyline. This is definitely urban living, but these neighborhoods look clean and safe. This is leaving Chicago on the Southwest Chief, a very different neighborhood than you saw with the Cardinal. It was hard to tell just where we left Chicago's city limits and started rolling through the suburbs. There's a certain charm to these little towns strung out all along the railroad tracks. Chicago is a major passenger rail hub, running trains to numerous eastern and midwestern cities and sending trains like ours, the Southwest Chief, to the West Coast. These suburban towns lie in the same track that hosts the California Zephyr. The Southwest Chief uses the same tracks as far as Carbondale. Chicago land seemed to have come to an abrupt end we suddenly found ourselves in the country, seeing farms instead of houses, and barns instead of factories. I'm always struck by the sheer volume of land in the United States that's still rural, still a world away from the crowds and bustle of the city. Taking Amtrak reminds me of the happy fact that there's still more countryside 
than anything else. So now we left Chicago behind and were rumbling toward the land of enchantment.